nationwide, but actually Alberta Canada is going to start one for all over. I want to be the worst nightmare for every paranormal believer in North America. 50,000 bucks if you got the talent. We've done free tests for James Randy. Dozens of investigations, probably hundreds after I know that. So uh, we're very busy. Evidence-based as opposed to faith-based. I felt bad for Dan last night talking to the guy who's just doing all kinds of mental gymnastics about the meanings of words and things. When people show up at our door, they have to be able to do something. They have to be able to show us something or they're just wasting their time. In fact, we don't even uh, entertain custom and dealing with them until they come up with something very specific and tangible that they can do. So let's start off by defining what a miracle is. It's an effect of extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all of human and natural powers ascribed to a supernatural world. That's a pretty big part of it. So it's not the beauty of nature, it's not the miracle childbirth or anything like that. Not the Cubs woman. <laughs> Actually, that might be a good thing. <laughs> so I sort of polled a bunch of people after, uh, I, I've done a version of this talk, but I've, I've revamped it for, for this conference. and um, Tried to get an idea from people what they thought the big five miracles of the Bible were, and uh, most of them come from the New Testament. So these are the ones that, just as an informal poll, uh, we kind of arrived at. Levitation, which is Jesus walking on water. Faith healing, of course, Jesus heals the sick. Resurrection, that's a big one. Jesus and Lazarus come back to life. Transubstantiation, which is just changing something into something else. Jesus turns water into wine, and as the Catholics would have you believe, the host turns into the body and blood of Christ. Hold on to that gruesome thought, because yes, after you take your Holy Communion, I'm not sure exactly at what point, they believe that literally it turns into the body and blood of Christ. Maybe as it slides down your esophagus. And mediumship, which is sort of an overarching term I'm going to use for anyone who's talking with angels or God or ghosts or uh, sort of the, the nether worlds. We're not going to be talking about snakes and donkeys and any books. These are the good Old Testament ones. RACs, Egyptian plagues, which they neglected to mention the Egyptian recorders of history didn't really talk about those. Plague. Somebody might have written that down. Uh, 600 year old man, yes, no, it was 600 when he built the ark. I give him a lot of credit for that. I'm 50, I can hard to get out of bed. Uh, giants, it's not the giants. Christians don't talk about that too much, but the Bible says in the Old Testament there were giants out there. I'd like to know more about the giants. Um, before we talk about the specific claims, I'll just do a, a couple of basic skeptical points about when to be really skeptic, skeptical about things. I think you people are um, probably way in the camp, and I hope this isn't too much review for you, but um, just some ground rules of when to start getting your skeptical hackles up. Is, is what they're telling you something you've never seen before? Okay, well maybe you live in some tiny town in Kansas and you haven't seen anything. <laughs> so then does it just start to find some rules that you seem to know about, which is defy, uh, define how the universe works. And if you don't know much about how the universe works, then you can always ask the smart people how the universe works. Because we're starting to get a pretty good idea about a lot of things. This part is not a necessary part of skepticism, but if it's making, if it doesn't sound right and it's making someone rich or powerful, that's a nice little thing to keep in the back of your head. 
Now let's talk about the biblical authors themselves, who we will call the claimants. We'll treat them as the claimants tonight. Uh, there are a lot of reasons to be skeptical about them. Uh, the first of which is the historical context, the period in which these things were written in the first place. These are people who believe in giants, in witches, demons, ghosts. Okay, maybe that's not too different from what a lot of people believe today, except for the giants part, maybe. Um, but they also believe that natural phenomena were caused by direct human interaction. If you beat your wife tonight, and there's a lightning storm later in the evening, the lightning storm came because someone up there was unhappy about you being your wife. Beliefs like that. So these people were pretty primitive. I'd like to ask these people lots of questions. Um, we always go to the sources. We're not armchair skeptics. We go out and talk to people. We go out to the scene where claims happen. Obviously, this can't happen with these investigations because they've happened uh, centuries or millennia ago. Um, but our approach is to talk to the sources and get some idea who are they. What was their agenda? Why did they write these things down in the first place? Are they believers? Are they followers? Uh, that can affect why these things are, are, are written. Uh, were the translations accurate? I mean, by the time you get to uh, the King's English, the King James Bible, the original words have been translated at least twice, maybe three or four times. And you know, anyone who's ever taken a language in, in school, you know that you lose something every time you translate. You never get a, an exact meaning from one language to another. So that's a big problem. Years ago, when people talk about the Muslims and the 72 virgins, or is it 72 grapes? That's a big detail, people. Now, if they're messing up on details like that, maybe Jesus wasn't walking on water. Maybe he was walking on ice or something else. I don't know what it was, but we know the translations aren't reliable. Then were the compilers. I mean, there was no printing until Gutenberg, right? Or no mass printing until Gutenberg. Um, I guess there were wood carvings and things. But are the people who were copying these things, are they doing it accurately? The people who compiled it, Council of Nicaea, what got in, what didn't get in? Who are, who's making these decisions? How do we know that this is a comprehensive aspect of the plan? Well, all these things go in and, and just continue to create this giant cloud of skepticism that should surround these things. Before we even look at the first claim, the whole thing has got major problems. Were the people who wrote about the events eyewitnesses? Now, biblical historians think they were not. A lot of these things were written about decades or even centuries after the fact by people who obviously were not on the scene. So that's a major problem that you're writing about hearsay in the first place, which is not even admissible in a lot of court cases. So first of all, you're getting hearsay. Secondly, who says eyewitnesses know anything anyway? Eyewitnesses make bad eyewitnesses. I wish I had a nickel for every client who came to me and said, I know what I saw. No, you don't. People don't know a lot about what they look at. <laughs> and just to, I mean, just to give you an idea of what, when I, when I found this picture, was, I thought it was kind of cool, uh, just what goes through my brain, I'm already looking at all the possible ways that this was done. Like, here's some fingerprints and toe prints there. So either this guy's got like a piece of plastic over his head, and he's just holding his breath for a few minutes, and somebody ran in and patted that, you know, threw the sand on there and patted it down to him. There's somebody standing over here, there's their shadows. Obviously the camera person is very tight on the scene, so we don't see anything else. Like maybe is there a hose coming out, and he's breathing through a hose for a little while? I don't know, that's, that's the way I look at a picture like this. All right, let your eyes dart around that for a second. Stare at it. If you're seeing anything move, you're wrong. Because this thing is static. Maybe it might be too far to see it, but if you look at that up on the screen, that thing's alive. But it ain't moving, people. And if you 
testify in court that it's moving, you will have given false information. Let's look at another one. Those things swelling out a little bit at you? No, they're not. They may look like it, but they're not. You're crummy eyewitnesses. Was that a duck or a rabbit? Duck? How many people say duck? How many people say rabbit? All right, 50% of you are wrong. It was a rabbit. Or was it duck? All right, I don't know. Okay, and those lines sort of look like they're on different parts of the pages. They look like they're different lines. Of course, they're not. They are exactly even with each other. So, don't get too involved in what you think you saw. I, I don't know what I saw, but I know what I know. I know there's people sitting there going, I'm very careful about what I say and what I think. Yeah. All right, let's. Do a quick little pop quiz, try to answer quickly. Uh, the first one is a historical question. What year did Christmas and New Year's fall in the same year? History majors, any idea? Every year, that's right. Don't keep doing that. Let's do one more. How many times can you subtract 5 from 25? This is a trick one. Think about it. Once. Who else? Five. Infinite. Yeah, you can do it any, any number you want. Just keep on subtracting or don't. <laughs> so, do a couple of quick lessons. Don't be too in love with your own perception of the world. What you think you know is sometimes untrue. That's a real tough one for people. Read a book called Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me, Carol Tavers. It's fantastic. Very uncomfortable book to read. How many times have you said openly, I was wrong, you were right? Twice. Those words don't come out so easy. Twice. Any of us can be fooled. Every time we do a test with $50,000, we get in a huddle and we say, we can be fooled, but be careful. You don't have to stay fooled. All right, one more set of lessons. Uh, the claims we've dealt with generally fall into three categories. The first category is they misinterpret the facts. Their senses are working okay, they see something, and they just get it wrong about what they saw. They misunderstand what they saw. A lot of times when people are looking at a, an airplane from a distance, if they're looking at a perfectly side-on view, the wing disappears, and it just looks like a missile, a, a fuselage. That sort of report comes about all the time. And it's just because the plane happens to be in that perfect position when you look at it. So they misinterpret the facts. The second group is obvious, the hosters, which surprisingly we don't deal with that much. We've, we've dealt with lots of people who are trying to win the 50000 from us. None of them have intentionally tried to trick us. But they're out there. There's plenty of people selling things and doing things. Every single uh, crop circle is a hoax. Every single person claiming levitation is a hoax. Every single person claiming to be able to bend a spoon with his or her mind is a hoax, 100%. I'll bet a finger on it. The third group is mind or body malfunction. There are people who hallucinate, they have mental illness, they have certain problems, or their eyes are bad, their ears are bad, or something else is going on physically, well, but why they're not getting this, okay? All right, those are obvious. Uh, one more look at the difference between the way we look at things today and the way these stories were told 2,000 years ago. They were a pre-scientific society, uh, moderate communication between regions, uh, a lot of secondhand and hearsay information, uh, no way to get a, a final version of what happened, no way to record something. We videotape everything, we take millions of pictures, because if we do get burned, we need to go back and look and find out what happened. They could never do that, they get one shot to witness something. We have scientific analysis, sharing of information, 